Hey everybody, it's Master Gallengeist here, bringing you my review for Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater on the Xbox Series X. And I am glad that I played this game, because I got turned onto this series by uh, Reaver of Jill Sandwiches, and it's like, okay, this sounds like an interesting kind of survival horror game, uh, like using the camera, uh, putting ghosts to rest and all that kind of stuff and that it's just really hard to kind of play nowadays on modern consoles. Uh, I wish there was better emulation for certain kind of stuff because I really would have liked to have played the other series. But I got this to kind of support it. Granted, it was only digitally. I would have preferred physical, but you kind of know how that stuff kind of goes anymore. But it did pretty well in my opinion. I mean, granted, if you're trying to have inordinate expectations for a port of a 2015 Wii U game to other consoles. Uh, like, if you're thinking that thing's gonna hit, like, a million, you need to re-examine your expectations because I've seen that the sales figures across all platforms got to, like, over 340,000, which I think shows a good, healthy interest in the series for what they've done. Now, again, this is a port of a Wii U game. And you're like, hey, you're wearing the jacket. Doesn't that mean that this is kind of bad? Granted, there are a lot of problems in this. And the biggest is incest ghost baby. Okay? That auto jackets this motherfucker. Like, ain't nobody business. Now, granted, there are other things. But I do like the complete kind of basic premise of utilizing, like, a camera. I'm like, yeah, this is a... Now, granted... This is kind of old, but kind of not. I was like, hey, I get to use this as a prop. But it's like, the whole basic kind of premise is taking pictures of ghosts and laying them to rest and everything like that. And it does, they do utilize the camera kind of aspect pretty well. I do like that. And it was different because normally you're like, okay, how can you kind of jive up uh, and jazz up a kind of horror aspect? Do you go completely unable to do anything? Kind of a la uh, Outlast. Outlast? Yeah. Outlast the video game, outcast the series. Yeah, sorry. Uh, but, like, this kind of finds that middle ground where you're like, okay, you are vulnerable, but you're able to utilize something to attack your opponents. Now, Since I'm kind of familiar with the series and haven't played most of them, I do understand that 5 is not the best representative of the whole series. So I am like, alright, listen, I understand this isn't the best kind of stuff that you've got, but I do want to show that I would like to do some more stuff here. Uh, the main kind of problems, again, are mainly story-based and sometimes even kind of dialogue-based because, granted, I understand when you're translating it gets kind of different but the kind of acting aspects for certain voice lines were just like yeah granted I understand you don't have the content there but when you get the content with certain delivery it's like what in the ever loving fuck uh, and then it gets down into certain other kind of gameplay mechanics that they did mainly because hey it's on the Wii U let's do certain kind of gimmicky things now, that doesn't mean to say that certain Wii U gimmicks and Wii gimmicks don't work. Sometimes it's just kind of, like, awesome, like, no more heroes. You're fucking using the Wii mode to, like, charge up your lightsaber and shit like that. It, it works. Here, however, since you're not on that system anymore, you've got certain kind of things that are just like, oh, God, what's going on here? Because you could definitely tell that with certain kind of ghost hands and stuff like that. So, how do we want to kind of do this? Let's go with the gameplay mechanics first. And then I will dive into the meaty aspects of trying to unfucking tangle what the hell is going on with this story. So, you got your three protagonists. You got Yuri, you got Ren, you got Miyu. They all center around uh, Mount Hikami and all the ghostly shenanigans that go on there. That's just the basic kind of setup, so that way I can get into the meteor aspects of what works with the gameplay-wise and what doesn't work for me in the gameplay-wise. Now, granted, since I'm an older gamer, 
I've been around the block on certain things, so there will be certain aspects where it's like, oh, you've just played so many of these, you probably got fatigue on certain things. And you'd be pretty much right on certain things. Uh, with certain survival horror kind of things, I can understand why they took certain routes to kind of like keep the tension, but the thing is, since I understand that those are used for tension building, it kind of more bores me sometimes if it doesn't kind of keep me as actively engaged in trying to like figure out certain things. So, of course, we got the camera obscura, that's your main kind of weapon that's divvied up between the three. Granite, um, Yuri and Miyu share one, which becomes important because mechanic-wise, you get points for every time you clear a level, and then you use those points to upgrade your camera system, which I am not against in theory. However, they're the only two that share, and then Ren's by himself. So he's got his own kind of camera, and then you got to divvy up everything there and kind of figure out kind of how it kind of works out for how you want to do it. It's definitely built in mind to grind and replay certain things, which how I only just went through on one playthrough, the tedium would just fucking nuke me. I usually like to get things as maxed out as possible. It's kind of usually a fun kind of aspect. I like to make something kind of overpowered and be like, hey, bitch, wah! And like, <laughs> like, take out any kind of enemies or whatnot, or see what kind of fun kind of comes out of upgrading those kind of things. That really doesn't kind of appeal to me here, so I only stopped at kind of one playthrough. And I used a guide to try and figure out certain endings to make sure it kind of worked out, so that way I'm like, yeah, okay, these are the kind of endings I kind of want to go for. So, that's important because it, it gets into how you kind of want to play a game. Because in order to get more points so that way you can be more effective as you move throughout you usually have to prioritize which kind of film that you use and granted higher kind of films are able to do more damage to ghosts however you get more points usually i believe if you utilize the kind of infinite film that you've got now granted if i'm wrong tell me please because there's other like i could not really figure out most kind of aspects on how to speed up and sometimes i gotta like fuck ton of points uh, for no kind of reason even though I felt like I was going slow as shit which also brings up another kind of criticism I have is that it's wildly disproportionate how long certain levels kind of take certain ones are like an hour long potentially and then other ones are just kind of like shorter kind of stopgap ones and you could complete within a couple minutes and sometimes even farm if you're able to do that effectively. That's not a complete problem in and of itself. It's just it drug on certain levels to such a point that when I got to the end, I'm like, dear God, end this. Like, I understand you're trying to keep the tension and trying to keep everything kind of building, but when most of that is just walking up and down a mountain and getting around certain places where I'm like, I'm not really spooked or scared because it's more of like, not like in um, Resident Evil or Dead Space where a necromorph or a zombie or some kind of mutated motherfucker would like crack out and be like, yeah, bitch. And I'm like, Ugh! whenever the ghosts pop up, I'd be like, fuck, I got to do this battle. So since I'm utilizing kind of the worst film to make sure that I got like a higher score so I could upgrade my camera to like kick ass and take names, those battles just take forever for me. And it just became boring to me. Granted, I do like the overall concept and potential and execution of what a kind of camera battle system against Ghost would work with. It's just here, it didn't hit completely right on me with how it was kind of balanced out. Also, it's kind of weird when you see female ghosts having essentially dead or alive kind of like boo physics going on. It's like, do you want me to be scared or do you want me to be like excited, man? I, I don't get it. However, neither of those feelings worked out when I'm like, Come on, line up, line up, line up, bam. Okay, line up, line up, bam. Because I didn't know how long it would take to, like, battle these ghosts. I don't really usually have a health bar or whatnot. Sometimes it'd be like, points, points, points. I'm like, cool, I understand that these are probably being added to my score, but can you tell me how long it's going to be before I fucking end this thing? That it just turned into tedium, and I'm just like, please, please. And you don't really kind of want that in a battle. You kind of want an ebb and a flow and to 
certainly towards like certain ends of like survival horror you don't want to be overpowered for your character because that takes away the survival kind of horror aspect but you kind of want towards an end of a game to be like yeah you got this you got this you're getting better you've got better weaponry you can more effectively handle certain situations though if you fuck up your shit's gonna get pushed in and rocked that like ain't nobody business however it's just here it's just like all right all right it uh like skill aspects don't really come as much into play more as gear aspects kind of do if that kind of makes sense like uh most of the encounters if i'm trying to utilize and get more points to make sure i've got better kind of camera stuff and uh, there's not much i can do otherwise than like okay if i'm going under the assumption that like the infinite film is going to be the one to utilize i'm like okay uh nothing i can do to pretty much get this out faster except just boom 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 try and get these together boom 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 um and then also kind of it was very inconsistent in it's teleporting and warping i.e okay i pretty much finished this section and then they're essentially just going for atmosphere slash tension i guess and just trying to kind of creep you out however it just got tedious to me going through these same areas uh trying to get up Mount Hakami and down Mount Hakami. And it's just like, all right, cool. Never mind the fact that sometimes, like, I'm a weird kind of completionist. I go into, like, corners and be like, what the fuck is this thing? When you're going to grab items, they for some reason go along with the Shenmue kind of aspect of, like, ooh, I'm going to go in and kind of, like, instead of just picking something up, you actually go in and you're like, okay, here's this thing health item oh also for some reason you could buy health items but uh i would kind of discourage that and just utilize the point systems to upgrade your uh camera and everything because they actually give you a lot of health items in this game no granted uh i could understand why that would kind of like fuck with the survival horror kind of aspect uh and normally i'm like yeah just fucking like rain that shit on people i'm fine with that However, it just kind of goes to the unbalanced nature of it, uh, where you're like, yeah, you, you'd want to be, like, you want to figure out, like, yeah, I need to push forward. I do have, like, a little bit of stuff if I ever get into, like, I'm fucked territory. However, there's always that kind of point where you're like, I don't have any more, and I am fucked. So that only becomes important because I'm talking about picking up items. So you're like, ooh, here's this little thing. It's a little health item. So I'm going down, I'm grabbing, and I'm like, all right, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? And then sometimes you just grab it, and it's like, all right, here's this thing. And then sometimes you'd be like, oh, ghost hand grab it. It's like, oh, god damn it. It didn't really add anything for me. Uh, not that it's a bad system. It's just it adds tedium instead of tension for me. I'm just like, all right, I got to grab this and see if I'm either going to get ghost hands or not. And then I got to... It takes you a couple seconds to go in, go back out, go back in, grab it, or get grabbed, shake it off, go back in to grab it. It just, it becomes like, I just want to pick certain shit up. Why are you making this? Like, there's certain aspects of video games that you kind of video gamify, so that way it, you want to be playing the game. Whereas this, I'm just like fighting the game of like, I don't do this but you need items good sir possibly even kind of lore aspects for this insane story to make sense all right but i don't want to deal with the ghost hands and being wet that's another aspect it's like the wetness i i get kind of why they did it for certain kind of demographic reasons of being like hey um wet t-shirt contest kind of thing and if you're in that kind of thing okay cool that's for you demographic it's not really for me and it doesn't even really add anything it's just like okay you're getting tainted 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 and then of course you can get damaged more easily it's like fuck damn and it's just all right Ugh. let's see up and down that um and certain times like when I say this, I know it's going to come off as, like, I want to be handheld in a game. But that's not really the case. There can be a good balance of letting you know where you need to go and not telling you jack-fucking-shit 
You know what I mean? Like, I don't need to be, like, a giant fucking neon sign with a fucking ghost, like, in a goddamn feathered boa going, Hey, Berlin, right over here. Fucking right here uh, is where you need to be. I don't need that. But um, if I'm going through this kind of shrine-like place and it takes forever and there's, like, loading... Now, granted, with the Series X, it was optimized for it, so loading wasn't that kind of big of a deal. But the tedium of being like, I got, like, you don't run or walk very fast in this game. Uh, it's like, all right, cool. Ba, 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 ba. Uh, so I was, like, trying to figure out where certain things are. It's like, all right. Especially when it gives you, like, very little details. When you utilize the camera to kind of, like, do these, like, psychic photographs to kind of figure out where you either need to take a photograph or find an object, it's just like, all right, I kind of need a little bit more information than that to figure out where the fuck to go, but all right, cool. So those are kind of the big kind of aspects that I'm like, and I know saying this sounds like I didn't have a fun kind of time with the game. And the thing is, it was kind of so-so. Like, I wouldn't say that it was like a thunderous punch to the nuts every time, like getting Dark Souls fucking Ornstein and Smog or something like that. But it just kind of harshed my groove on, like, what was kind of going on for it and kind of putting me into, like, middle-of-the-road kind of neutral territory. Like, God, this is tedious. And saying that I'm, like, neutral on that kind of puts me on to where it goes kind of negative more because gameplay, interestingly enough, however, it gets kind of, like, to the point where I'm like, I, mm, come on. When I'm t whenever I get into a game, I need a kind of good-ass balance of good story to keep me hooked and good gameplay to kind of keep the fun flowing. Like, Saints Row series. Like, Saints Row the Third for me had bonkers-ass story that sometimes made no sense, but sometimes that, no non that nonsense kind of shit would lead to some weird, crazy-ass gameplay thing that would have, like, all right, I got fun and everything. I'm like, all right, I kind of got this going. Uh, like, also, Guardians of the Galaxy as I reviewed on this channel. Uh, granted, the gameplay needed maybe some other tweaks, but it's a good kind of aspect of, like, I'm fighting with the Guardians, I'm doing all this stuff, and I'm getting into real deep Marvel kind of lore. That one was more story-heavy, whereas Saints Row is more kind of, like, gameplay that uh, really pulled me in. Here, Tedium entered into the gameplay where I'm like, okay, I like this, but you need to kind of, like, make it so that way I can do some crazy-ish no, I don't need, like, a complete crazy-ass shit, but, like, my skill can somehow factor into this of me being able to get through this or do something kind of cool with it. And then the story, it... Oh, it's a mess. Oh, my God. Like... Good gameplay can save a crappy story. But a crappy story... Like... Like, good gameplay can save a crappy story. If you gain, like, bad gameplay can tank a good story. Like, with my view on The Last of Us, the original, like, I played the remaster on the PS4, and I really wasn't into it because the gameplay didn't really pull me in. Story-wise, I'm like, alright, cool, this would have been fun, but the stealth mechanics kind of fucked with me, and, like, doing the kind of scavenging aspect was kind of like, eh, okay. So that's an. I'm trying to give some examples of what I'm kind of meaning on, like, why I have the weird kind of push and pull, especially with this game. Like, in Saints Row, I'm having fun doing shit. It's like, okay, I can forgive certain kind of story aspects because it doesn't go and completely, like, shit itself. However, like, when you've got the kind of worst kind of gameplay aspects here and this kind of worst kind of story that just kind of like fucks itself, uh, it just becomes kind of unbearable and kind of tedious. So, we kind of get introduced in the beginning to Yuri and Hisoka. Hisoka is pretty much a medium using the camera obscure to kind of like help people and do all this kind of stuff because she had near-death experience and can pretty much is doing almost Sin Eater kind of, well, the Sin Eaters are mainly the Shrine Maidens. But she's trying to help people, like, find people and all that kind of stuff. 
she helped and found Yuri because she survived a thing that just uh, killed her whole family, and she sees dead people and everything everywhere, and was pretty much getting ready to kill herself. And I was like, okay. The thing is, it's how this kind of story is presented. You're thinking, okay, that sounds like a kind of interesting story. Not the kind of way it's presented, though. Like, it's execution is what fucks it, and then you're like, alright, cool. And then most of it you kind of have to learn as you're reading through lore. I always kind of have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with lore strewn out throughout a world. It always needs to be value add. Never I need to fucking know this information so that way I can either connect with the characters or make any of this shit make any goddamn sense. Alright? Because, unfortunately, a lot of games put the important shit into that lore category and it's like, no, 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 no. That's supposed to enhance it, not have me understand what the fuck's going on. Dark Souls and Destiny. It's a giant fucking dragon. Yeah? Why should I fucking care that I'm fighting it? Oh, because thousands of years ago, it's shit in a golden toilet. And? That's all I kind of got. Oh, and the toilet's gonna fight you too. Fuck you, man! <laughs> Destiny. Um... Yes, the darkness, yes. Villain. Okay. Go fight that raid. Okay. Is it connected to the story at any point? Not anymore. Fuck. That shit happens too much. Um, but here we see that Yuri was dealing with, rightfully, like if dead people are talking to you and shit and coming up to you and going, blah, 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 and all that's going on. Uh, yeah, you need fucking help for that. And then Hisoka's like, hey, just stay with me in this kind of weird little antique cafe shop, which for some reason interested in, interested me more. Uh, granted, I've worked in antiques before, and I'm thinking, ooh, an antique coffee kind of shop thing, cafe thing. Huh, that's kind of interesting. And that's kind of weird that that can pretty much be like the thing, and I'm like, hey, okay, this is a weird little aspect that really has nothing much to do, except we do kind of like fight and do shit in this place like about twice. So, they kind of, it kind of builds up slow, kind of like doing all these kind of cases, uh, well, little cases to try and find these girls, but they keep getting taken by Mount Hikami, and pretty much dying, like, you keep failing a lot, it's like, alright, crazy as shit, it's like, and then once you start kind of seeing more of what's going on, you're like, how is this region not completely and utterly fucked up, especially with, like, the lore implications of, like, hey, we have a gateway to the underworld that's fucking open. Wouldn't that be continuing and have, like, vast fucking kind of problems that there's something like this kind of going on? Yeah, but we've done, like, human sacrifices and shit that should keep it closed. Are you sure about that? No. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I mean, basically, like, they keep kind of going up and, like, all these kind of things start going on. I was like, what the fuck? And then we get this Ren dude who is... Evidently an ancestor of the dude that created the camera obscura that's able to, like, uh, do stuff with the supernatural. And evidently he's connected with, like, this shrine maiden that was supposed to be, like, an eternal pillar. Like, they do these shrine maidens to, like, take in all of the, like, regrets and shit so that people could pretty much have a clean death, similar to kind of, uh, Sin Eaters. It was re I really like the kind of Japanese folklore and all that kind of aspects and everything. It's just how it's kind of like spun and executed. It's just like, why is why is this place doing this? I mean, that's a like if you're if what you're telling me is true, it's like there's like one water that's like death and underworld and like a gateway kind of shit to that. And another one is the thing of life, and I understand that kind of aspect. You're trying to do all this stuff with water, though you're going to vastly absurd lengths to kind of like, uh, pretty much. Uh, make sure that your, like, water mechanic has some kind of, like, feasibility, like, a reason to kind of exist here, but have at ye. And it's just like, er, er. I understand that sometimes people would, like, create some kind of system as a stopgap measure, but this doesn't even seem like it would work that well, because you're just piling on negative shit onto certain people until they pretty much go insane, and then you're like, go marriage them. That'll extend them longer. It's like, you duct taping a motherfucker right now, man. And it's like, whoo! Because that then brought, brings into Ren, because he's, like, researching shit. And he has this assistant girl that I wasn't even sure if it was a girl or not until later on. 
And his one friend is like, oh, I found this girl in this picture. And he gets pretty much, like, drawn into a ghost marriage kind of thing where he gets put into a fucking box and pe putting people in boxes and black water. It's just like, uh, shit. And then Miyu gets brought in because she was pretty much being made into a pillar thing because Yuri was able to kind of find her. Though, Hisako gets fucking, like, I don't know if she gets captured or whatnot, but the plot's like, yeah, she's gonna be up here for a little bit. And then Yuri's able to kind of, like, pull her back, but we find out that, like, this Oze chick is like the eternal pillar kind of thing, but like doing during everything to try and make her a pillar because there was this one dude who went to kind of like have a good death because that's what the shrine maids do. They take all your regrets and shit like that. And then they're like, hey, we're going to give you a clean death. It's like, yeah, but well, shouldn't you just ha help these people deal with their problems so that way they're fulfilled and at peace and passively go on to uh, the next life because that would kind of dissipate that rather than make a giant fucking kind of negative energy bomb? that we essentially have with Mount Hakami that's essentially trying to, like, engulf the region and kill everybody and make everybody ghosts. Kind of. Eh. But that is kind of, like, that kind of gets later as you're kind of going through everything. Now, granted, I did kind of like the aspects when, like, they would bring certain people in, like me. Because Yuri finds her in a box, like, all right, cool, she's asleep, so... Yuri then goes to sleep, and then Ren kind of has to, like, go around the antique place and fucking fight ghosts uh, to kind of, like, protect them. Uh, but then we get Miu, who is linked to, like, the one of the original protagonists, well, both of the original protagonists, of uh, Fatal Frame, uh, Miku. And... I don't. I didn't quite understand her kind of getting thrown in here because it's really weird that we have three protagonists kind of similar, a la uh, GTA. Except it works in GTA Five better because all the kind of stories more intersect well. Here it's more like they each have three stories and they chopped them down to certain extents and tried to slot them together. And it's just like okay because Miu's whole thing is she's trying to look for her mother, who is for some reason thirty-seven here and looks like a sister at best. And they sleep together. And it's kind of like, I kind of get it. Uh, because your mom's been gone. But when you get the implications that uh, the brother of Miku uh, is dead. And she got into a ghost marriage with him. And somehow had an incest ghost baby. Which is Miu. You're just kind of like, now you're just fucking going nuts. Oh shit, crazy man. Like, I, I'm trying to figure out what it fucking adds to this story. And I'm just thinking, somebody's like, you know what I want? I want incest ghost baby. And nobody said no to that person. And this is the game we got. And I'm like, no. I, I don't want incest ghost baby. I don't even understand how this fucking occurred. Or how this fucking happened. I'm like, um, but see, most of the dudes get like put in fucking boxes. And shit. And are dead. But uh, you got put in your box and you're still alive. And I don't know how you'd have this baby and what's going on anymore. Now, granted, did I... I might have missed things, all right? Like, there's probably something in there that could have, like, explained timeline-wise of what's going on, but she's, like... I don't know why Miku was like, I gotta die! Why? I guess because she wanted to be with her dead ghost brother and be in the afterlife with him? Ew. No. Now, I understand that you're probably like, you're getting hung up on this a lot. And I'm like, hey, when it's one of the central kind of things for one of the characters, and I'm just like, this is stupid? That kind of really fucking takes me out of most of the other shit. Though, I do kind of like the kind of aspect of that, hey, we tried to deal with this essentially like world-ending disaster thing with a really imperfect system, uh, maybe we should have, like, thought about this or did other things with it. I'm like, wow, that kind of would have been a really good story. But they're going to jack that down and be like, um, just keep making pillars and we'll see how this fucking shit goes. Because I got to the end of the game and I got to, like, the good endings and I don't even know how that shit kind of still kind of works out. I'm like, but is the underworld still kind of splooging in? What's going on here? Do we still have ghosts? I don't know because, like, Oze's, like, moved on. I picked that Ren... For some reason, has two kind of aspects going on. I would say it's like, hey, you're the avatar of a dude that I love. And then there's this 
uh, other little girl that for some reason his fucking ancestor was linked to. It's like, yeah, I gotta be fucking turned into a pillar before I'm seven. Shit. I don't even know where the fuck they had her in just for creepy little girl ghost. Yep. That's about all I'm getting, really. There's a lot of weird fucking shit in this game. I'm like, okay, you could have edited, you could have, like, put one as a nice central aspect, you could have been like, boom, 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 yeah, and do it kind of that way. So, Ren kind of deals with them, he either picks Oze to kind of deal with and either be like, I reject you, or I love you, and then... I picked the, like, okay, you good, and she got, like, good out, and then, actually, technically, I did that shit with Ren, and I don't know why then Yuri would have to fucking fight her if she had that kind of closure. And then, of course, you could do the same thing with the other one. It's like, you either, like, I'm not going in your box! Nope! I'm not fucking doing it! And then, for some reason, he still gets with, like, his 17-year-old assistant. I'm like, God damn it, the dude's, like, 23 or something. And it's really weird, because... They're kind of cut off on certain things. It's like, yeah, you're an old person if you're in the in your uh, like early twenties. I'm like, good luck with that. All right. And then Miu is also able to like either save her mom or not. She's like, no, all right, I won't fucking go to the afterlife. All right. Like I I. If there's an interesting kind of part of the character, cool, but I really couldn't connect with them at all when I'm like, all right. Her, uh, Miyu was more used to kind of connect with and ground Yuri, but Yuri and Hisaka's kind of aspect were kind of better of like trying to help other people out and help herself out with everything going on and seeing how they kind of balanced it out. How failures have weight on Hisako and how she tried to help Yuri and why that was kind of leading her to be able to be utilized as a pillar because of those failures to kind of like help other people out as they tried to pretty much box her ass. Uh, but then Yuri's able to fight Oze and she either kills herself with Oze and shit gets even worse or she's able to like free Oze and then everything's okay. I know that sounds rambling and crazy and insane and me trying to even stay on it was just like this has problems man like there were certain aspects and kernels within the story that were interesting like uh the one dude who went to pretty much get freedom and getting like hey these mind reading powers are kind of fucked up i'm gonna just murder everybody it's like why'd you do that and then you kind of fight him but you don't really have like a final boss battle with him like he kind of like just fucking disappears after a certain point like they use him for like jump scare kind of like Mr. X kind of shit, but it's like, all right, cool. And the whole kind of thing with the underworld and shit like that, there's like, hey, we got to kind of figure out what's going on here and keep some shit in balance. It's like, uh, I guess so. Let's just push it off for like a while and make some people go insane and then, like, essentially duct tape the situation with, like, ghost marriages and just keep putting people in boxes and water. Duh. Like, and I understand that they set up that water has very, very strong religious significance to these people, but I just... Nobody asked why? Like, why are we sticking people in boxes, man? So we can have the weird gangly ghost and shit. All right, cool. Go with it. Ugh. So, I know I'm sounding like I think this is, like, an insanely bad game. Uh, however, the aspects that I've mentioned of, like, the camera combat, uh, trying to learn certain kind of lores and understandings of, like, Japanese mythologies on certain kind of things and death and cameras and everything were really kind of cool aspects that I really liked. And, now granted, most of the stuff that I said really does earn kind of, like, why the jacket would come out for this. And, I don't, it's really weird because I'm like, okay, there's probably a lot better Fatal Frame games that they could have used to represent the series with. And, I don't know if I could, like, recommend this to somebody who wants to get into Fatal Frame because, honestly... 
other people that I would talk to who know more about Fatal Frame than me would probably be like, the other kind of games would be better kind of introductions, whereas this one, even though more kind of modern, does have its kind of issues and problems. Now granted, the other ones could have problems too, but uh, I don't know about like mountain and teleporting problems where I'm like, when will this level end? Oh. So, we'll kind of have to see how this kind of serious thing goes. Uh, I would like them to bring up or at least have the aspect of trying to do like back compat on certain things. Uh, or to just make a better kind of new game or new kind of trilogy and just kind of like, just like even a new kind of story, not following these characters. Just be like, all right, we're doing ghosts, we're doing cameras, let's do some crazy uh, Japanese kind of folklore, explore that shit and do it. And just do that as, like, the next Fatal Frame. Like, the way you could really uh, do an anthology kind of thing to this series to where you just would go around utilizing the camera as the main kind of common aspect and, and ghosts and then just go around exploring the different kind of mythologies on certain things. There's a lot of potential for this. And if you're kind of interested in, like, the camera aspect and the ghost aspect, Sure, I would recommend it. If you're into an in-depth story that makes any kind of sense, I would definitely kind of dodge this. The characters are really not really well delved into, except for, like, Yuri and Hisako. Not Hisako. Hisaka. Hisoka? I'm probably mispronouncing the shit out of that. But, Hisoka. Yeah. Fuck yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> shit birds. Oh, shit hogs. Another game. I like that one. Um, yeah, it's... I would definitely try and play it on kind of like the newer kind consoles. I can't speak to how it plays on any kind of other ones, but definitely look into it if you want to, to support the series. I normally do not say that for kind of like uh, a bad kind of game in a series, However, this is kind of the only one that we've had. Like, I've got contentious kind of stuff with certain kind of things. Like, I believe that you should follow a series until you don't feel like you're good with it anymore. Like, I'm done with Destiny. I'm pretty much getting done with Halo because 343 has had three games so far to do their kind of stuff. And I'm just like, I don't understand what you're doing anymore. And you just have to be like, no, nah, I'm good. And the thing is... I have the misfortune of coming into such a late date that they're like, yeah, Fatal Frame would be kind of cool to play, wouldn't it, my friend? Yes, sir, Bob. Can I play any of the other games? No. Um, why? Because you can't play them on the modern consoles, my friend. Well, that fucking sucks. So I guess I'll just get this to be like, hey, could you do some more shit with this? So that is pretty much the strange recommendation, I would say. Like, if you are, if you want to show the company that you are into this kind of game, go for it. But definitely give them the constructive criticisms that, con keywords, constructive criticisms for what needs to kind of like occur and to make sure that you stay with this series and are interested in it. And if they don't accept that constructive criticism, don't buy it anymore. Be like, I'm okay. I'm going to go look for some other shit to kind of support. And I know that's kind of hard because of how nutty it is to usually get and a lot of big corporations buy up IPs and do jack fucking shit with it, Konami, motherfucker. Mm. Oh, people like Silent Hill. How about we just make a fucking, a fucking pachinko machine, motherfucker? Oh, what about Metal Gear? What about Castlevania? What about all these IPs we got? Yeah, let's just make gambling machines. Sorry about that. <laughs> I don't mean to freak you out, but I think just having and sitting on an IP or just doing like the bare fucking minimum to keep an IP and being like, yeah, it's kind of shit, but I did it because I needed to keep the IP. Well, then fuck you, man. Yeah. So, I did enjoy getting a kind of other kind of feel for the survival horror genre and seeing what can occur with cameras and ghosts and kind of a focus on Japanese folklore. Though the story and characters just did not do it for me. So, 
Those are my opinions on the game. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, also like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.